Let's talk about setting and achieving your weight loss goals. So if you're wanting to lose weight, it is important to set some goals. And because the thing is when, when you are setting out to achieve something, you need to know what it is you're trying to achieve. And that way you can work towards it and being able to see that progress towards a goal is the thing that will keep you motivated throughout the weight loss journey. The problem is there are certain aspects of weight loss that make it difficult to set goals in the traditional way. So the traditional way most people set goals, and I love this way to set goals in general, I've had a lot of success using this method, it's called the SMART method. You may have heard of it. So basically SMART is just an acronym. So each letter stands for something. So uh, the S stands for specific. And this I think is really important. It's important to be as specific as you possibly can about what you are setting out to do. Uh, a problem I had in the past, it was, I was really vague. I would just say, I want to lose weight. And that's really vague. Like, how do you know when you have achieved that goal? You, you really can't know uh, with any degree of certainty, whether or not you you've failed or if you have succeeded. And actually that may be a reason why some of us don't set goals because once you define your goal, then you've also defined failure and that can be kind of scary. Now, the problem is it might be that you really don't know the specific number you want to hit uh, because you don't know, like what will your body be like at that specific weight? So what I would recommend is yes, you pick a number, but don't marry the number. Instead, figure out what do you think your life will be like uh, when you achieve that number. You may pick a number and say, you know, I think at that number, and again, this is just a guess, I think at that number, I'll, I'll feel pretty comfortable in my own skin. Uh, I'll be able to shop uh, for clothes and, and feel good with uh, the clothes I pick out. Uh, and I'll be able to, to keep up with my kids who are, you know, running me ragged right now. And so then as you approach that number, instead of just being married to the number, you're also looking at, okay, uh, are these other things starting to be true? And then once those other things are true, I think it's better to say, okay, I've, I've achieved it now. I thought I needed that number. I don't really need that number. I, I wanted this lifestyle and that's what I'm happy with. So let's move on to the M in SMART, which stands for measurable. And this is so important. If you are trying to hit a goal, it's important to be able to measure your progress. It is the thing that will keep you motivated uh, because it takes a long time to lose weight. And so measuring when you're wanting to you know, lose weight, you gotta measure your weight. And I get it, you know, it's really hard to step on that scale for the first time. But as soon as you step on the scale the first time, it gets progressively easier. I recommend daily weighing. That's what I've done since February of 2015. It has helped me to monitor my progress, to let me know when things weren't working, and then also to keep it off in maintenance. Now the A stands for achievable, and it is important to figure out, you know, is the goal that you're looking for achievable? Now, my personal opinion is any weight that you wanna to get to is achievable, but you have to be willing to make those sacrifices that are necessary to get down to that weight. And, and you may not be willing to do that. And this again is tricky because you may not know the level of sacrifice it will take to get you to that number that you originally Picked. And so I think it's good uh, when you're sitting down and, and you're trying to figure out, is this achievable or not? One good question to ask yourself is, have I ever been at this weight before ever in my life? And what did my life look like at the time? And, and kind of compare that and contrast that with, with, with what kind of time you have available right now. I mean, maybe you were down at a very low weight at one point in your life, but you were also at, you know, in the gym for three hours a day and you were eating, you know, celery and water and that was it. And, you know, really look at your whole life and, and decide if it's achievable, if it's a fit, if you think you will want to live the life necessary that it will take to get to that number. Now the R stands for relevant. And this is an important thing to really sit down with yourself and decide, is a weight loss goal relevant for your life? Uh, you know, sometimes uh, women especially, I would say, uh, kind of have this tendency to always think they need to lose weight when in fact, it might be that you're at a perfectly healthy weight and there are other goals that would be uh, more worth your attention right now. So, so really sit down and look, you know, are you at a healthy weight? You know, you can check the BMI charts and see. And another thing to check in with yourself about is, is this your goal? Is this really what you want out of life? Because it, it might be that you are at a place 
Or yeah, you are overweight. Maybe you're even obese. But if it's not important to you to lose weight right now, it's probably going to be a waste of your time to sit down and set a goal. It's probably somebody else's goal. So instead of trying to lose weight for other people, which is usually kind of a losing battle, you know, sit down and ask yourself, what is something that you would like to achieve in your life? What's important to you? And then make a goal based on that. Now, the last letter is T. And this is where I think a lot of people get tripped up with the weight loss journey because it stands for time bound. And the thing is, deadlines do work. They will get your butt in gear when otherwise you're just kind of procrastinating and things. The thing though about weight loss is it's just different than a lot of other types of goals that you might want to achieve. For example, like if you want to have a thousand dollars in your savings account by the end of this year, you know, and you look at your budget and you say, okay, I can cut a hundred dollars out of my budget every month. By the end of the year, you'll have over a thousand dollars in your bank account, barring, you know, any kind of major emergency in your life. But with weight loss, it's just different. You may not lose weight as quickly as you think you're going to, even if you're being consistent. The scale kind of moves at its own pace. And it also really depends on how consistent you can be with your chosen plan. And so instead of thinking of deadlines, I do think it is important to think about time. Think about, you know, okay, if I can figure out a way to lose weight at this certain rate, then it'll take me this long. But maybe if it takes me, you know, like maybe I can't lose weight that quickly, uh, you know, then it'll take me this long. You know, it might be years that you're talking about, but at least then you can kind of see there's still an end in sight. But I would not recommend having a hard and fast deadline where you just say, I've got to get the weight off by June 5th, 2021. Uh, because what I have seen in my own life and in people around me is that leads to doing unsustainable things. So in other words, you know, maybe you get kind of a slow start to the year and then by May you're feeling desperate and you go on the crazy diet. And yeah, maybe you do lose down and, and you get to your goal weight, but then it's a binge fest and it's like you bring in all those foods that you love that you were denying yourself and and then you pack on all the weight and usually it comes back with a vengeance too. You you pack on additional weight too because you're feeling bad that you're you know regaining the weight. So instead, again, you know, kind of have some, you know, timelines in mind, but, but instead of thinking I've got to get it by this certain date, think I'm going to keep going until I reach uh, my goal. But right now you might be feeling really overwhelmed at the idea of, of sitting down and figuring out what your goals are. I mean, I remember for sure in 2015, I was in uh, the, the locker room of a gym and I was standing there trying to figure out like, what's that number I, I need to pick? Uh, to, as my goal, like I've got to figure out this goal, like what does it need to be? And I just felt completely overwhelmed. I felt, I don't even know what a good goal is. So I'm going to share with you just kind of the process I would recommend uh, based on what I learned on my own journey. So I would recommend that if you have no idea what is even a good number to pick, sit down and look at a BMI chart. Now that's a very simple chart and no, it's not perfect. Uh, every chart is going to have its shortcomings, but uh, look at based on your height, what a normal BMI is. And you're going to find that it's a pretty big range. And, and that range, I have found that a lot of people start to feel comfortable in their own skin once they get near the normal range. And that was certainly the case for me. And actually, I would recommend that, that when you're picking that number, uh, you know, maybe pick on the either the high end of normal or even the low end of overweight. And I'm just basing that on my own experience, because in 2016, um, I found that the closer I got to the normal BMI, the better I felt. And, and, and really, I, I stopped losing weight a few pounds before I got into the normal BMI zone and I felt fantastic. I mean, I was very confident. Uh, I felt good, uh, you know, really high energy. And I even maintained that for about a year before I decided, oh, okay, I want to lose uh, those last few pounds so that I'm, you know, officially in the normal BMI zone. But I can tell you from the experience, not much changed in my life from that point, just above, you know, the normal BMI to actually being in the normal BMI. Now remember, like once you pick your number, don't get so married to the number, but instead think about what you want your life to look like and, and write that down. You know, I want to be at this weight because I think at this weight, these things are going to be true. And then 
take that number, whatever that number was, and subtract it from your current weight. And yes, that means that if right now you don't know what you weigh, you need to go get on the scale because you want to lose weight. And so the only way to know if your plan is working is to be able to see the scale moving down. And I get that it's scary, um, but I got over my fear of the scale and you certainly can too. And it has been the thing that I, I really believe that daily weighing habit has kept me on track, not only when I was losing weight, but keeping it off for the rest of my life. Now, once you've subtracted your goal weight from your current weight, that tells you how many pounds you need to lose. And so then what I would recommend is working out a few different timelines. The first one is kind of the, the most optimistic one. And I would say a pound a week. And the thing is, you, you may say, oh, a pound a week, that's, that's way too slow. But what I've found is the people who tend to get the weight off and keep it off for the long term have done it slowly. You know, so many success stories that I've seen, it's been, you know, about lifestyle change and, and slow weight loss that they could maintain for a long time. It's very rare to find people who have, you know, dropped the weight really, really fast and then kept it off for a significant period of time. So do one timeline based on a pound a week, which again, does take discipline. It, it, it takes consistent discipline to lose that amount of week, uh, week in and week out. But then also create a couple of other timelines. I would do one for a half a pound a week and even a quarter of a pound a week. And I know that sounds incredibly slow, but the point is, is you need to be able to show yourself that even when you're losing weight really, really slowly, uh, you are still making progress and that there is an end in sight. You will eventually get to that number if you continue going on your plan. Speaking of, it's important that you write down a plan. And this is where a lot of people get stuck because again, you know, it's like there's this resistance. Like I don't want to write this down because once you write something down, it's kind of like you're committed to it. It's, it's real now. And you're not trying to keep stuff in your head. You're just, you know, you're putting it on paper. And when you do that though, when you write down your plan, it gives you something to refer back to and you, and you can see like, okay, here's my plan and here are my results. So is the plan not working or, or is the plan working? You can know all that once you have a written plan and you're tracking your progress. And you know, with tracking, all that is, is just you weigh. Weigh yourself every morning, see where you're at, track that number, keep a log of it somehow. You might use an app or you might use a spreadsheet. Now I love the seven day average and keeping track of that because it helps smooth out this whole process because your weight can go up and down uh, quite a lot. Uh, over the course of a week. But if you average those numbers, it can show you over time, you know, what your weight is trending like. So once you have your written goal and your written plan and you start to track, you should be able to see that you are making progress and being able to visually see that is the thing that gives you motivation that helps you to see, okay, as long as I keep going with this, I will get to where I want to go. And I just want to forewarn you that what can happen towards the end is that as you're getting towards a normal BMI, the weight loss may slow down significantly, even when you're continuing to be really consistent on your plan. And because you have just set out a timeline, just kind of a loose timeline, you can see that eventually you will get there. And because you don't have a, a strict deadline, it won't tempt you to do those things that are unsustainable. So I hope that this video helps you with setting and achieving your weight loss goals. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.